morning everyone I have one more card to show you with the pieces that I made in my first video for the watercolor washes so this is these are the art pieces that I made and if you haven't watched the video go back and watch it I made um, this piece and then I also did a watercolor wash with this piece so Make sure you watch those so you know how to make the background for these. So I'm going to put this to the side. This is my piece that is going to be on the bottom. And then I want to show you because this comes from Sarah Douglas. And it was for On Stage. And her and Shelly did a presentation. And the card that I did in the other video was Shelly's card. And this one is Sarah's card. And she... She's a fabulous stamper, just like her mom. So she made a template for this card. And this is the Poppy Parade. And the Mary Merlot is stamped over top of it. Then the Bumblebee and the Pumpkin Pie is stamped on top of it. And then she did these two pieces in Old Olive. So let me show you how this card comes together. So in my other video, I showed you how to use... Versa mark and your gilded your gold leafing. I showed you how to use it with an old blender pen to get it in like the little creases of the flower. But this time, um, Sarah showed us how to use one of our sponge daubers. So you just take a sponge dauber and you take your Versa mark and you just ink it up and just put it wherever you want it and it doesn't have to be anything you know just go with it wherever you want it to be just so you know where it's going to show because you're going to put more pieces on your card and you just don't want to waste it so just put it in I'm not going to say that word again you just put it in specific spots and um, and you'll be good to go so then you bring in your heat and stick again I'm going to have to get some more been using it a lot this does go quite a ways though because you know you put it on the card and then you just put it right back in to use it again try not to get it dirty like I do mine somehow the gold leafing got in there when I was um, using it but it doesn't hurt anything it just adds to it so it's going to get loud for another minute while I do the heat embossing it's my favorite thing to do so what you want to do is you just want to heat it. I don't know if you can hear me or not. I hope you can. But you just heat it till it gets shiny. And on this one, it's kind of hard to tell. But if you just um, hold it under the light, you can see when it starts to get shiny. Let me just put it away a minute. You don't have to listen to it. going to try to show you this. I know you probably can't see it, but it's shiny. Once you heat it up, it gets shiny and you can see it. Sometimes it's hard to see on camera. And you bring back in your wonderful gold leafing. Love this stuff. So just a reminder, when you get this, just use a little bit at a time and get a big container that's deep and wide enough for your cards to go down into or whatever you're going to use with your gold leafing. So, you just add it in, you know, just use your sponge. And remember, just keep one sponge for um, this gold leafing and just leave it in the container. That way, you know where it is all the time. So, that just gives you, and put the lid back on it before you move it because it likes to fly around too. I have a lot on my floor that I need to um, get rid of today. So... Some of that heat and stick out of here so what you want to do is you want to start building and what i did this is a piece of the acetate that comes in the fine art the floral fine art floral collection is what it's called so what i do is i just take some of my glue and i just go like into the circles or you could even use glue dots so just put it 
I went and put it all over the place. You know, it does dry clear, but this way, when you put it on, it kind of smushes and um, disappears into your cardstock. So just add it in different spots. It really doesn't take a whole lot to hold it, and then you're actually going to have other pieces on top of it. So, you know, it'll be okay. So put some glue on the back of your pretty peacock. And just lay it down. And then we're going to start layering. So I have several birthdays this month, so I'm going to make both of mine birthdays. So what you want to do is you want to add, let me show you, you know, paper has two sides. See, I use both sides of this paper. You can always reuse your paper, you know, use the other side, especially if it's thicker. Cardstock sometimes with the Whisper White, it shows if you um, stamp on the other side with a dark color. So you want to start layering your flower. So don't press it all the way down in case you want to just move it around a little bit. I need one of these pieces. Got moved somehow. So this one I popped up on the little mini glue dots. This one, see, <laughs> stamps on the back side of this one too. Isn't that pretty? It's kind of pretty on that side. But what you want to do is you want to layer it on your acetate slides around for you just a minute so then you bring in your green piece that you stamped and this is just so you can layer your other flowers on it and get different colors without having to color all of the flowers this is a really easy way you could even put different colors a different color for each flower if you wanted to with your um, stamping spots. So what you want to do is you just want to layer this. And I love it's kind of the quirky, it's off to the side. And then you just bring in your paper snips and you just cut out your flowers. Just cut them out. And then, oops. You just layer them on top of the other flowers. Unless you like green flowers, you can always leave them if you like them. So you just layer this right back on top. And then you still have your greenery already stamped and you don't have to color it. I think it's fabulous. So if you wanted to, you wanted a different color flower on there as well, you can always just one of these and pop it on there if you wanted a different one just like that and then it would tie into that but I just want it all yellow I don't know why I like it I'll probably just use all red on the other one so with the happy birthday if you notice this little wiggly ribbon here this is from when I frayed the ribbon and put on the other card That's in the other video. So this is the frayed ribbon. And these are the pieces that was left over after I frayed the ribbon. So all I did is I took, don't crumple it up and then it's easier to work with. But I just took some of it and snipped it. And then you just wrap it around the end of your sentiment and leave some of the threads hanging. If you don't like it, it's not your style, you know, it's okay. I just, I thought it was kind of a cool way to use up some of my pieces that I sacrificed my ribbon for. So this way, I'm telling you, things always have a second life. If you, you know, put them to the side, then your brain goes, aha, I'm going to use it this way. Get these dimensionals off of here and since we're going on the diagonal let's just finish it up that way I think it's kind of cool so I'm going to show you something real quick hopefully my camera is still going and recording for me I have 
So I'm going to bring in my Stamparatus. And for you that don't know what this is, this is um, a stamp positioning system. Stamping Up came up with, and they did a wonderful job on this. So we're going to put these to the side real quick. And bring in the Stamparatus. So the Stamparatus, it has two plates. And then... That way, if you're doing a bunch of these, you can position the stamps where you want them once, and then you don't have to try to figure out where they're going to be later on. So hopefully you can still see that. So I'm doing Poppy Parade and Mary Merlot, and we need a piece of paper. So let's put this in here. So Mary Merlot is going to go on the accent, and you always want to put something under your plates to hold them up so you can stamp on your, or ink your stamps. So you want to press that down. And the great thing about this Stamparatus is if you don't get it dark enough, you can do it again, and it's going to be in exactly the same spot as before. Isn't that sweet? I love those colors together. But with the Stamparatus, if you haven't used it before, you can use all you can use both sides of this plate and you can put stamps all over it and set them up once. And all you do is you pull straight up, turn it around. And I do have a couple videos on my YouTube channel for hinge stamping and um there's another one, tips and tricks for it. So all you want to do is you want to just pull straight up. If you put it to the side and try to pull, it's not going to go anywhere. So that's a good thing. They don't fall off easily. But you just pull straight up. You can pop it around. Use the other side if you want to add even more depth to that. You can do that, certainly. But I love the Stamparatus. If you have any questions about it, just let me know. And I hope you like this video. I'll see you soon. Bye.